So one of my viewers asked me if I can make a reaction to this video, it's called 12 Things America Could Learn From Australia. Uh, so yeah, very interested to see this. I really like to see the differences and similarities between different countries, especially when it's two kind of Western countries that have, I guess in a way, similar reputations, being that they're very, very highly sought after countries for immigrants to move to. I think these are probably the two main countries in the world that people would love to move to for different reasons. Uh, obviously America has its problems like with like gun crime and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, very interested to see the differences and if you know any videos that are similar to this that compares Australia and the UK, please tell me. I'd love to see that as well, being that I'm from the UK, being that I'm from Scotland. What's good y'all Tristan here and today I'm going to be going over 12 things that America could learn from Australia. Pardon me if it is a little bit loud, I am filming this in a public park, but that is actually my first thing that I think America could learn from Australia is how to build a park. This goes way beyond just how to build a park, but really how to build like any like nice public facility. If you look at the park in right now, I mean I can show you there's this huge playscape just right over there, I'll show a picture of it up, but that that, actually, that doesn't even look fun for kids, that looks fun for me man, look at that thing. I mean imagine you're a kid and you fall down there, that's quite, I mean, that looks insane. I don't think I've ever seen a park like that in the UK. Look how high that goes, is that not dangerous? I can see my son, my son's only three, but he's very active and a bit like, a bit mad. I can see him wanting to climb all over this man, that slide would be like... That would be heaven for him. That is what a typical playscape in Australia looks like. I'll throw some more pictures up just so you can see what a playscape in Australia looks like. But this, like, I here, never this knew. picture right here is what a playscape in America looks like. Playscapes here are so much bigger. The kids have it way better. But beyond playscapes, this goes to, like, skate parks, for example. Skate parks here are in every city. They're awesome. They're mm. huge. They're nice. Not the same in America. I thought you know, that was the same in America, one or two nice ones, But in Australia, there are way more. And overall they're much nicer there are so many examples of great public parks or public facilities in australia pretty much every single city here in australia not like all but most of them have these things called lagoons they're not really like lagoons they're just public pools but they call them lagoons but check out how nice these things are these are jeez man already one minute into this video and those three things just look amazing they look so good like this is what i've been talking about in previous videos as like someone who has a young family Places like this just look ideal, like look at this man, like some sort of paradise beside the ocean, amazing parks, skate parks, so much activities, I think that's why Australia is known for having that sort of Free pools open outdoor public. lifestyle. They're absolutely beautiful and they're right in the city centre. I'm currently in Airlie Beach, this is what Airlie Beach looks like, Brisbane also has a nice one. The parks here are just so much nicer right. and everything related to them is nicer. Oh and there's like free electric grills like right over there, there's two perfectly clean electric grills and oh and free bathrooms like god I, I need to like, this could have been like five points all on its own but anyway. He's so excited, I'm getting one, excited watching him so learning about this. And the US could learn how to build parks like Australia. The yeah, second thing sure. that America could learn from Australia UK could is too. how to make a thing of coffee. The coffee here is so nice, it's so fancy, it's so well done. Just like a basic cheap cu cup of coffee, they just put so much more like attention to detail in it. I can't really talk too much on this because I don't drink coffee, I don't like it. But literally, everyone who comes here, like Americans, non-Americans, everyone who comes here just thinks Australia has the absolute best coffee in the world. All right, now the third thing, America- Tell me if you're from Australia, if you leave Australia, can you really tell the difference of how bad coffee is elsewhere? When I went to Australia, I really enjoyed it, especially I was in Melbourne, I know it's known for coffee culture. I loved it. You can learn from Australia is traffic circles. Oh my well, god. Right. They have traffic circles freaking everywhere here. You'll <laughs> find them in neighborhoods, you'll find them in towns, you'll find them That's in the same in Scotland. Roads. There'll be traffic circles with like two, three lanes on them. They are so, so common and they just speed up the flow of traffic so much. Like there are so many like small stoplights that we have in America. Could that be, that could be eliminated if we put a traffic circle there? Like no joke, there's probably about one fourth the amount of stop signs in Australia as there are in America because of the traffic circles and also they just put a lot more like yield signs up um, instead of stop signs. So like if you don't have to totally stop, uh, those put a yield sign there. Which is also kind of nice. All right, so the fourth thing I think America could learn from Australia is how to package and sell watermelon. What I mean by this is in America, like if you're buying watermelon, it's probably gonna be like a full entire watermelon or you can get like a little thing of like little like dice cubes of watermelon. The issue is like the little dice cubes are usually pretty expensive and it's just like, you know, enough for like one or two people. And then the whole entire watermelon, it's like 
way too much for one person and like honestly I am from a family of four and one watermelon is too much for our family usually. Here in Australia usually when you're at the grocery store you're gonna see quarter melons and they sell them by the mm. quarter melon. This makes so much sense it doesn't cost more it probably saves a lot of melon you just yeah. I never melon, knew this would be a problem. Ceram wrap and then yeah sell it in force easy as that. The fifth I never knew man I thought oh, most watermelons came already quartered I never knew in America they had to buy them full and then cut them themselves but here in Malaysia that's one good thing is the fresh fruit at the side of the streets they sell all of these things in small bags like the watermelon chopped up into little cubes you can buy them in Aussie dollars it'll be like 30 cents it's less than one dollar for a bag of watermelon pineapple mango papaya that's one thing I love about Malaysia the fresh fruit is actually great one is a little bit weird but that is we could learn from Australia to not put so much water in our toilets I don't know what it is about their toilets here but I feel like they're just like way more advanced than our toilets so <laughs> in America like for some reason it's a really common thing like I was just used to like having water splash my butt from like pooping into it and it like yeah <laughs> splashing up and then when you're flushing the toilet you know it's like shoo, 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 and you know it does like the whole like spinny thing and then sucks down it's like one long flush with a bunch of water well here in Australia their toilets just have a little bit of water and then your butt doesn't get wet when you poop there's no splashing going on <laughs> I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then on top of that, they also have like buttons. They have a button for poo and a button for pee. Some American toilets do have this, but I think it's like a law here in Australia because I every single toilet I've seen has had those two little buttons. That's the same in Malaysia has that too. Thing that this America is an interesting list. Is free slash cheap sunscreen. Whoa, You're probably okay. laughing at me as I say this while I'm all burnt, but that's just because I was on a boat for the past three days. Here in Australia, you can get like a full giant one liter thing of sunscreen, like enough for an entire family for an entire summer for like, I think it's like eight bucks. Like they're like super wow. cheap. And beyond that, okay. I usually don't pay at all for sunscreen because it's just free at most places. Like if you go to like a hotel, if you go to a, I don't know, an office, a restaurant, like imagine like how hand sanitizer is free in America in a lot of places. They just have sunscreen laying out in different places like that. Um, you can just get some, you know, put it on if you want. This is so nice. And that is when you know you're like a first world country, man. Like that is, I never knew that at all. Even after visiting, maybe it's more on this sort of coastal place, coastal cities. Or places near the beach that might be common is that common do you know of that free sunscreen but here in Malaysia that's the thing it's super expensive although it's such a sunny warm country uh, it's crazy expensive I think a lot of it's imported uh, so the cost is quite quite uh, quite a lot but I never knew it was free in Australia, but that's a great thing. That makes so much sense. I'm not completely sure on this, but I think the government subsidizes sunscreen a little bit. I think that's how they get it so cheap. Not positive, but anyways, it makes so much sense because like, mm. because the government also pays for the healthcare here, you're gonna have to be paying a lot more for skin cancer than you are gonna be paying for sunscreen. That's All right, now the seventh thing America point. could Very learn good. from Australia is work-life balance and how to party. Australians, man, they love that's to have fun. That's why I want to go to Australia, work-life balance. They party hard. Additionally, uh, just kind of the culture here and in Europe, they get a lot more paid time off for vacation. Typically, you get about five paid weeks off for vacation here. So that could be one of the reasons why they have a better work-life balance. But even when they're not on vacation, just on like a typical weekend, Australians like love to go out. They love to have fun. I don't know. I just feel like they do a little bit better job at partying than Americans do. All right, now the eighth thing yeah. that America could That's learn from Australia not the is case in how Asia. to do sushi. So. Yes, I know sushi is not like a typical Australian thing, it's you know, like Japanese. However, they have kind of put a little spin on sushi that I think makes it so much better and makes it kind of like reach like a, a much larger audience or target market, I guess, if that makes sense. Let me explain. Here in Australia, they have done a couple things that make it just kind of like cool and easy to get. So one is they have a lot of like quick grab and go sushi restaurants here where they just like have sushi like out in the window you walk by you can point to which one you want grab it and you go and it's not cut up like it is in america the sushi comes in a roll like this so you can get a couple rolls grab them and it's kind of like almost eat them like a sandwich as you walk down the street i absolutely love this they are great healthy like grab and go snacks you know i feel like in america if you're going to get something like grab and go it's going to be like i don't know like a subway sandwich or like i don't know like a burger from mcdonald's like something like not as healthy not to mention it's so affordable here like a roll like a roll of sushi like that one of those like grab and go places is probably going to cost you like 250 uh American dollars, USD. Okay, yeah. Another great thing about the sushi here is there's this style of sushi restaurant that I, I know it's common in other parts of the world, but I've just never seen it in America and we could totally adopt it. But that's like the like train track, I call it, style sushi. Pretty much you just sit down and you go that in America. the track and you pick up whatever you want, eat it, and then yeah, pay at the end by like the plates and it doesn't matter but i see like all of this for sushi is very the same as in malaysia it's just kind of like a cool fun concept and i don't know i don't think i've even seen a restaurant like that in america Whoa, as i'm editing I this video that. i just thought of another like that would be very common in america here, and that is they have a lot of chicken sushi real sushi lovers might say that that's not actually sushi but i don't know here at sushi shops i'd say about like 
almost half the sushis that they offer, okay, maybe not half, like a third of the sushis that they offer are like fried chicken or grilled chicken. This just makes sushi even more appealing to some people, you know, some people don't like fish or some yeah, people that's really true. like actually, chicken, that's a good point. and they can still get sushi. That's one I thing guess, actually not that. common uh, in Malaysia is, like I, I've not really seen know, chicken right, sushi the nice before. The thing America could learn from Australia is how to run a DMV. So I don't really know what to call this, but like, you know like the place where you like, you go to to get your license, to get like your car registered, like, like the government office, like, entity that you go to get all your car stuff worked out. In America, we call it the DMV, the Depart Department for Motor Vehicles or something like that. Anyways, and then I know in Victoria, they call it like Vic Roads, and then I know in Queensland, they call it something else. So it's different in every state here, but that the, the place where you go to get like stuff for your car, get it registered and all that stuff. Oh my God, it is so amazing in Australia. Like 10 out of 10 recommend, like they're tech savvy. You can make appointments online. They're quick. You get a little letter you, or number, you go into a queue. There was someone that greeted me when I walked in. Like they were just so like, it was a great pleasant experience. And I was only there for like less than an you hour. You get this guy a job in the America, tourism of, office, man. I'm talking about, but oh my so God. enthusiastic. Going to the DMV in America, like, it. Like going, like, like, it's like a trip to hell. You're going to go there early in the morning. You're going to wait in line for an hour. Then you're going to get a ticket. You're going to sit in a chair. You're going to be in another line for a couple hours. The people who work there are typically unfriendly and cold. They just totally suck in America. And here in Australia, I've experienced them in Victoria. And I had a friend that ex experienced them here in Queensland. And she was American. And anyways, both of us thought it was like super amazing here. So I'm just going to assume that in all of Australia, the DMV is probably much better than it is in America. Yeah, tell me more about the not just the DMV, but the general governmental of it, offices, like passports and things like that. Are they all efficient in Australia? That's the thing in Malaysia that really annoys me. Any sort of official things like this where you have to go and apply for documents and things, you can be waiting like three hours, four hours, five hours. The queues are insane, like outside the building, all the way up the street. Uh, people queuing from like five in the morning. How is that? not just in the DMV, but all over uh, all Australian governmental offices, is it more efficient? All right, the 10th thing America could learn from Australia is how to eliminate the frickin' penny. All right, y'all's lowest cent, cent coin is a five cents. We still have the penny, I don't know why. Not much to add to that. We just need to take after you and eliminate our penny. Number 11, and this is probably the most important one on this entire list, and that is we need to learn how to breathalyze like you do in Australia. When I was in Victoria, y'all had these big old giant buses that are all over the roads at all times of the day, just randomly going and they breathalyze, they like shut a road down and they breathalyze every single car that goes by. It could be at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. What do the Australians think like of that? Morning. You, know, you have no idea when is they're that a good be thing there. Or... They're there and they breathalyze everyone. What do you and think? Yeah, it's a great way to catch people who are on drugs or drinking and driving. The 12th thing I think America could learn from Australia is your slang. And I'm not saying we should like take your slang and adopt it to America. No. Like, Y'all's slang is like great. It's like a huge part of Australian culture. It's just who, who you are, you know, in Australia. And in America, our slang's kind of shit. Like we just, I don't know, we don't have good slang. We don't have much slang at all. Anyways, America, we need to up our slang game because here in Australia, they have so much slang. Uh, yeah, very interesting list. That park at the start blew me away. All that, all those things like the park, the skate park and that outdoor lagoon thing. Uh, imagine just having that on your doorstep and just being able to finish work early with that work-life balance and go and enjoy these things in that nice weather. That's why, you, to me, Australia seems like a total utopia, like an amazing place. Everything's just perfectly suited to make people's life comfortable. Tell me if there's anything that makes your life uncomfortable in Australia, and tell me what you think about that list. Thanks.